It's everyone's friend, it's Tyler. It's everyone's friend, it's Tyler. Hey guys, Tally here. I'm gonna kill two birds with one stone for this video. Largely because I'm responding to a video clip that talks about how people have a double standard when it comes down to damaging the Bible versus damaging the Quran. And I'm also gonna talk about a recent story that relates to this video. So let's start with the story first. Now the context for the video that we're gonna watch right now is that what happened was that a group of kids brought a Quran to a school, the Quran got damaged, and the school suspended the boys as a direct result to it. Now, the thing about this case is that many people are having the base of discussion about whether or not it's okay to, of course, desecrate the Quran or not desecrate the Quran. And this video is just one example that I think amplifies the hypocrisy that people say when it comes down to the Bible versus the Quran. What do you think is more important, religious tolerance or freedom of expression? I'd personally say freedom of expression. Um, I think it's very important to be tolerant, but I think ultimately, I don't know, like the mark of a free society is what you're able to say. And I feel like the right to kind of offend someone is kind of important because it's a sign that we live in a free society, ultimately, even if it can make us uncomfortable at times. So do you think I should have the right to burn a Bible, for example, if I wanted to? I think so. I, I, I personally think that like, I, I mean, I wouldn't personally, I'm not a religious, but I wouldn't personally think that's a great thing to do, but I think that still it's, um, you know, a right you have in terms of expressing your political views, your, your kind of I guess anti-religious views in that case in, in a free society, so yeah, I guess so. So, I don't know if you've heard of this case, but a Year 10 student recently got suspended from school after the damaging a Quran. Do you think that was the right move from the school's part? I do, because I don't think it's particularly... I don't think that's damaging that person's free speech. I think there's a, a, a confusion between um, free speech being viewed as, you know, someone literally being suppressed from what they're do, being able to speak out and someone being, you know, punished for that for the action. You know, it's not like they're taking legal action against them, it's a school, it's an institution, and it's quite a very, very culturally insensitive thing to do. So I think that that's not damaging that person's free speech, but I think it's correct to show that person that's very culturally insensitive and in a way racist, to be honest. When I saw this video for the first time, the first thing that came to my mind is that the guy in the video, as a direct response to the question that the woman was giving, said that burning a Bible is an anti religious act. That's good, that's fine, that's dandy. But on the other hand, he said that burning the Quran is basically racist. That does not make any type of sense to me in the slightest. And the main reason why I would say that is because racism involves prejudice against somebody based largely off of their skin color. Now, an anti-religious act involves something like desecration of the Quran or blasphemy or any sort of thing that goes against the very doctrines and ideas of the organized religion. And so if burning the Bible is a form of anti-religious activity, so too is burning a copy of... When it comes down to the issue of free speech, I'm personally a free speech absolutist. And so I would want, of course, everybody to say whatever they want to, no matter how offensive the speech is. Now, within, of course, the idea of free speech includes desecration of things and, of course, showing hatred towards items or property, right? And so within property rights, of course, a person can do whatever they want with their property. So if they want to burn their own personal copy of a book, they can do that. If someone wants to burn their own personal copy of a flag, they can, they can also do that too. But when it comes down to what somebody else owns, they don't actually have a right to burn their own friends or the property of a school stuff without that consent of that party right there. And so if it was a case in which, of course, the students burn a copy of the Quran that's part of the school, that, of course, would be a good reason to suspend somebody based upon that action. But according to the story itself, it seems as though that the kid brought his own personal copy of the Quran, and because he brought his own personal copy of the Quran, that would mean 
that he can do whatever he wants to do with his own personal copy of the Quran because it's not part of school property. And it was actually in America, he would actually have grounds to do what he wants to do underneath the First Amendment. I have a personal feeling that it was actually something like Christianity, for example, that the whole entire issue about desecrating a book would not actually be an issue. But I think the main reason why they are so concerned in particular about Islam is because we know and we've seen from various examples what extremists will do in order to, you know, shut up people and their dissenting opinions about that particular faith. But it gets worse because as soon as, of course, they suspend the kids from the premises of the school, they also receive death stress as a direct response to what happened to their book. Um, we, we have had to call the police. He has received death threats. He has received threats that he will be beaten up if he goes back to school. He's absolutely petrified. Um, but I don't want anybody to be prosecuted um, because of the stupidity of my son and his friends. When I saw that clip for the first time, that that woman received death stress as a direct result of, of course, the kid desecrating the Quran. I cannot help but just think about that same process for me because I remember a while back, because I drew a cartoon of the Prophet Muhammad, what happened was that the FBI actually came to my house. This happened last year because there were so many Muslims that were also very upset when it comes to this issue. And so basically they told me to use a VPN to make sure that no one actually tracked down my personal information or anything like that. Now, I talked to Christians before on many different occasions and not a single time when I talked to Christians, they started in some sort of death stress or whatever or called like the FBI just because I had a difference of opinion. And so I can almost always relate to people to have that kind of story largely because that kind of stuff also happened to me before. Now getting back to the issue here, I think of course when it comes down to this issue, I find it so strange that people value a book over a life. Think about this. Like, I don't understand this sort of mentality that a book is more worthy of thinking and of course caring about something than that one single human life. Human lives, of course, have values to them because everybody, no matter their background, have a shot at life. And once you attack somebody at that one shot of life, you're gonna not have a chance to do what you wanna do with that one life. And so it's so sad to me and frustrating that people put an emphasis about what a book actually says versus a single life. Because lives, to me, always matter more than a single copy of a book that came out 1400 years ago. And so a life always have more value than a single book. More so, I don't understand why the mom said in the video that she's not gonna press any type of charges against the stress that she received. I don't understand it. If you know the exact numbers of the stress, you could track down the stress, why would you not report about the stress? Why? On top of that, she comes to this whole entire place, the mosque, I'm assuming, with a headscarf. Why are you doing that? Why are you telling down your own personal things to make yourself look that way in front of people? Why are you doing that? Just, all I'm gonna say right here is guys, you need to stand up for what is right. You cannot tell down to the t to bullies to totalitarianists at all. You cannot tell down to them at all. Because if you give them an inch, they'll get a mouth. And so the more and more you give them that inch, they'll get more and more of a mouth. So, I want to say, guys, and this is the whole lesson I want to say, that free speech 
should actually be defended for like everything. Not for some religions, but all criticism of religion. Blasphemy covers everything. And we must not be hypocrites to criticize one type of religions, but not all type of religion. If we're gonna have free speech, it's free speech for everybody. That's all.